Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this uh, post-it note holder. I had my pre-order uh, products delivered today and this owl is part of a stamp set that as soon as I saw it in the new catalogue it was going to be the first thing on my list. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. Before I start, let me just show you this stamp set. Not a huge amount to it, but that owl I just think is absolutely gorgeous. And to get the branch as well, that's really great. But it also comes with some coordinating dies. I haven't managed to get them all sorted out properly yet. As I say, only right today. Um, normally I would have all on the back here all the pictures of how they die cut. Um, but there's a die cut there to take the cut the owl out. There's also a die cut there for this branch but that is not the same as the branch that's in the stamp set. They are two different ones so you have the choice of stamping or die cutting. Um, there's also four leaves here and I'm going to show you a little something about those as I work my way through. Two little um, things for sentiments which fit the sentiments on here which are wishing you a season filled with beauty and joy and sending warm wishes your way. I wanted my product, um, project not to be Christmas related, um, so I picked the sentiment from another stamp set. But again, I'll tell you about that when I get to there. And the stars. And here is an actual um, cutout of the owl. Um, but as I say, I need to do all the bits at the back here so that you can actually see what it comes out like but it is my absolute favourite. I will do a video showing you all the bits and pieces that I've bought, um, but for today it's going to be this project. I'm changing my colour scheme. Oh, actually, I made a mistake with this. Um, I got a hair there. Um, this colour here is Marina Mist. I started with Balmy Blue, which is the colour I wanted, but I cut it out and I made a mistake with my measurements and I thought, that's such a waste, I use a retired colour. So I did that um, and then I forgot to change back again to cut another one out for that. So it doesn't matter, it still goes in beautifully, it's just that I don't, I don't like using retired colours when I'm doing videos. Um, so I'm going to show you the card pieces you're going to be needing and I'm using mint macaroon and the sizes are five and a quarter inches by seven and seven eighths inches which is 13.3 by 20 centimeters a piece of whisper white which measures four and seven eighths inches by two and seven eighths inches which is 12.4 by 7.3 centimeters another piece of mint macaroon which measures four and three quarter inches by two and three quarter inches which is 12.1 by seven centimeters then you need a piece of soft suede approximately about three and a half by four inches which is about nine by ten centimeters a piece of whisper white for the owl again that's about two by two and a half inches or five by six centimeters a uh, piece for the sentiment, which, uh, did I measure it? Nope, didn't, but just for the sentiment, and I don't know what that one is for. Uh, keep it handy just in case I remember. So the first thing I am going to do um, is I am going to work on this bit here. That shiny bit that you can see, it's another new product in the Christmas catalogue and it's this and they are chicken wire elements. Okay, let me just get one out to show you. Now you can use these as whole sheets or you can use them um, just as part of a sheet. I've obviously used just part of it for my project. So just take that bit off, I don't need that. I mean you could use it, leave that on for your project if you wanted to. But what I did to get this adhered to my sheet there was I took my silicone mat, let's move that out of the way for a minute. Um, 
turned it upside down. You could use this side if you wanted to. I did start off with it on there, but I decided against it and I want to have the silver side. Sounds like I'm talking about a piece of beef, doesn't it? Silver side. <laughs> right, so I'm going to keep this handy because I'm going to put some glue on the back here and I just roughly want to know how much I have to do. I am actually using a retired stamping up product which is the two-way glue pen. I just find that this is just so useful for doing things like this. Um, as I say it is retired but you can buy uh, glue pens um, other, um, not stamping up um, but for a job like this I find they're brilliant. So what I'm going to do is keeping that so that I know approximately how far I want to go I'm going to put some glue at approximately every fourth square. I'm not going to be precise about it um, and I'm not actually deciding right now what I'm going to do, which bit I'm going to use because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put glue on there and then I'm just going to pop it on the top and then I cut the edges off. Okay, so leave that one there. So just holding it in place, I'm just doing these little bits here first so I know that's all the way and then this side I want it to go a bit over so I need to come in fact that's handy isn't it I didn't pay attention to it last time but that's obviously just cutting the top and bottom one off and I'm doing the row above that one because I don't know where I'll be cutting off yet and I'll do the row above that one you see how easy it is to use this. I mean, our um, fine tip glue pen is brilliant, but I don't think it's the right glue for this project. Okay, so I'm just going over. I reckon I'm missing every other one. Part of it's going to be fine anyway because, in fact most of it's going to be okay because I'm going to be putting, um, sticking things on top. Okay, so I'm happy with that and I'm just going to pop this on top. Now all I'm looking at is so that this is, it has those little ovals up there. I'm just making sure that it's straight as well. Looking at those little holes there. Yeah, that looks straight. Okay, so just give that a rub. I'm trying not to move it because there's obviously glue that's gone onto the silicone mat and if I move it, all that glue is going to go on the front of my foil chicken element, chicken wire element. Okay, so that's how that is. You may want to be a bit more precise than I have been um, right, the next thing I do is I have now made this um, embossing buddy my one for removing sticky bits and I'm just going to gently tap that over to move any tackiness where the glue has actually come through onto the chicken wire. It's also helping me to press the silver down as well. Okay, so that's fine. So, oops. So now I'm just going to cut that off. Looking from the, the back. Now I'm not going to throw that piece away. It may be useful, may not, but these other pieces I will dispose of. If you find that you've got any little bits that are sticking up because you've missed putting the glue on it, if you've got one of the little glue pens it's quite easy just to get the glue under there. I was so sorry when I found out that stamping up were retiring that glue pen. Um, 
I bought several of them so that I'm it'll be a, a long long time before I actually run out okay so you might find that these bits come up that just go round it with your pen and that'll be fine so that one's done so that will be my big shot that will be my owl that's big shot that's big shot so let's get those done first um, so I've shown you the stamp set for this the sentiment is from I'm pointing at that as if you can see it okay let's get you back in screen here right okay so you've seen the stamp set for that one and the wake up kit kick butt repeat is from enjoy life um, it's not um, the kind of sentiment that I would particularly choose but I'm totally focused this is masculine and it's the kind of thing that I think men would like so let's I'm using um, soft suede ink The die that I've used to cut the sentiment out comes with the owl set. So that one there. Let's move that out of the way. Let's do the this gorgeous, gorgeous owl. Well, that bit of paper's. Oh, I wonder. I can say that bit of paper's rather large for the owl. Maybe that's what the other smaller piece was for. Look at that. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? Mind you, if you don't like owls, no, not at all. But um, I love them. Right, so that's for that. Um, I'm going to get my big shot up now to get that done. So we'll have this one first, and I'll get the dies. So that's for this one. Wake up, kick butt. That's this one here, and this one. And note that we have four of those, okay. I have die cut, I'm not using them, but I have die cut some out. Because I'm going to show you an idea. That, an idea that's in the catalogue. I'm not allowed to show you the catalogue yet until the uh, until it goes live. 5th of September, so watch out for that. Um, but I can show you projects and all the uh, products that I have as well. I don't do Halloween, but I imagine this would the owl would be good for that. Right, there we go. I'm not sure he looks scary enough. Well, I suppose you could make the surroundings dark and spooky. Right, now without moving that just jet, I'm going to take that off. I'm going to remove that. I'm just going to move this one, roll it through a couple of times. Just make sure it's cut beautifully. There we go. Must be stuck in there. Yep, that's fine. Right, let's move this back out of the way.
look at the detail that's on this die cut like these bits of branches down there and the um dents my brain's gone um the dents are in the uh, tree tree branch there such a small little detail but makes so much difference it adds so much right so that's all of that that um all my bits ready now i think let's move the stamp out of the way so the ne oops look right there let's get myself straightened up again right now we're going to work on the actual um cover so i have this and i have my scoreboard and if you've been following if you follow me you'll know recently I've been having trouble with my um, scoring tool jumping the tracks but I've got one of our new um, I think we're calling it take your pick tools and one end it can have it's an interchangeable end and one end is a scoring tool so I'm going to try to see if this is better so, to give you the lines that you need to score in, it's three and five eighths inches first, which is 9.2 centimetres, and then four and one eighth inches, which is 10.4 centimetres. I think that's sorted out my problem, hasn't it? I've been using wax paper on my uh, cardstock to stop my scoring tool jumping. The next one is four and five eighths, which is 11.6, and that's it. Because I've been talking, I'm going to run through those again. First of all, the inches. It's three and five eighths inches, four and one eighths inches, four and five eighths inches. So you've got half an inch between them. And then for centimeters, she says hesitating, just making sure she's got the same gap, yep. 9.2 centimetres, 10.4 and 11.6. All these details will be in the box below my video. Right, so next thing to do is to fold all of these in the same direction. Okay, so that's that one. and obviously make sure it's all lining up beautifully. Let's turn it over to make sure I can see. Okay, now if you fold this again on the centre fold, Right. You will have one that's shorter than the other one, but that's fine. Now, what I want you to do is to mark here. Now, if I can... Oh, you can see here, can't you? How far along can you see? Can you see right to the edge? No, not quite. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark with a pencil at one and three quarter inches and three and a half inches which is 4.5 and 9 centimeters so let me just do that like that's one and three quarters and three and a half okay so I've got little pencil marks just there doesn't matter if you're a bit out now with a pair of scissors you want to cut on that line up to that scored line. Okay. Now the beauty with our snips is they cut right to the end of the blade so I know that if I put that point right on that score line that's as far as I'm going to be cutting. Okay turn over and that's the same on the other side. Okay. Right, now that you've got that file, what you need to do is open it up like that. That one in the centre, you want to have it staying, standing up, but these as a mountain, and these two you want to go down as valleys. Okay, so that 
goes down and that goes down and that stays up okay so you finish up with that and just give that a flatten with your bone folder now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to adhere that piece down okay so your book is going to be your fold is going to be like that so I prefer at this stage to use Tombow um, I wouldn't recommend snail but I think the tear and tape would be fine obviously if you're doing like me and using Tombow don't put so much so it oozes all in the wrong places Okay, so that's got to come down like that. Okay. Now what I tend to do, if I've still got them out, yes, I tend to put the pegs there allow, to allow that a bit of pressure to dry. And while that's doing it, that, I'm going to put the rest of this together. Now there's a good example for you. You see that little bit has come up. I just touched it. Can you see? Yes, you can see that. Okay, so I'm going to use my silicon mat with my glue pen. this onto here. Uh, which way did I use it? There we go. Um, I put it on that way but these come over the top because the die cut is a bit bigger. You can see how that's, yes, that's coming over the top. So in fact what I think I might do, I might pop that onto the white piece first, like that. I'm going to use Tombow for that as well. There we Right, so that's that. Now I'm going to put some glue onto my branch. And I used Tombow for this, didn't I? Don't forget my little trick about um, if you put too much Tombow on your die cut just blot it on some scrap paper so that will take off the worst of it otherwise you'll have it oozing out from all the uh, sides Right. So just letting that so that oh, that didn't come over very much at all now, did it? That's all right. This one has at the bottom. 
Not sure if you can actually see that, can you? The shine's putting it, um, making it more difficult for me to see. Never mind. Right, now the owl, I'm going to put him on there, anywhere along there, and I'm going to use dimensionals for that. in half or we use the minis and I should have a pair of non-stick scissors that's more like it So just do it so that his tail and his claws are hanging onto the branch there. And we do the sentiment. And that's definitely only two of these. Just doing that in the centre. I hold this up so I can make sure I get it as close to straight as possible. There we go. Now, for these leaves, I saw in the um, Christmas catalogue that these, which are from the same die set, they had been used to be put onto the branches like that, which is going to be fabulous for Christmas. I didn't pay much attention to how many were on there but um, there was certainly enough that made it look really lovely um, but I still had it in my mind that I wanted this to be a masculine thing without being Christmas you know I had visions of a man having this sitting on his desk okay so it would be all year round this that one rather than just Christmas for this but it would make a great Christmas card so I thought I'd show you that bit, but what I have used here is actually our leaf ribbon. So what I did was I went through, I have prepared them all over there, and I just cut them, separated them like that. I don't think I left one together. There we go. And I just cut around the bottom. And cut that bit off okay and then what I did was I did four or five at a time I used Tombow and I just put a little bit of glue on the end of each branch where I wanted my leaves to go come on Tombow there you go I said four, about four at a time. I get a bit more confident the more I do them, so it probably increases the amount I do. Okay, so with the cut end, I'm making sure I've got the right side facing, just pop that over there to cover up the branch and give it a press down. After a while you get to recognise which is the right way and which is the wrong way. And again, this one's going over the top, the leaf there, which is fine, but the only thing you don't want is for the, any of the leaves to go over this, over this fold mark, because as you open it, it will scrape. So 
So what I've had to do on that one is I've cut that leaf, made it a lot, lot smaller up on there. Okay, so it might be an idea to leave that one until you've actually got this adhered onto your frame there. The cover, I mean. In fact, I think I'll put this on there before I go any further. This would look nice if it's got a darker green at the back there. Just a thought. Right, now let's do some more. Oops, bit of a big blob there. Just having a look, see whether I made that two leaves there. And that one I did just one. But I'm going to put glue on both the pieces just to make sure the uh, leaf stays in place. You could leave the leaves off altogether if you prefer the um, bare branch look, which Presumably is what you would do if you were doing Halloween. I'm no expert on Halloween at all, so... I could be talking a load of rubbish. <laughs> it has been known. See, it doesn't really take that long to do this part of it. Was one wasn't it? I said you may find you have to go quite a little way up the branch to cover both of those up, but it can be done. Right now, I've just got the five over here. I'll spread that out a bit. It's a bit thick. There we go. So all I have to do after that is to pop the um ah uh, pop the note uh, post-it notepad in there. So that's the one that I have to cut down because that's far too long. Okay, I'm just using my tweezers to give it a really good, each leaf a really good press down. And when I've got two leaves going in the same place, like these two, I try and make the points match up. Make them look more like twins rather than just two separate leaves. Right now, that one's okay. Right, what I'm going to do, I will cut this down so that you can see what I do. I just take my scissors and curve that down towards the point, but then just spin it round so that it's curved at the bottom there. And then I should be able to, ooh, just about get the two points together like a twin. There we 
Okay. Just think that one might come off, might need a bit more glue. But otherwise, I'm pleased with that. Um, let me put the post-it pad in there. And again, I'm going to do that using a Tom Tombow. Look how well these colours go together. Absolutely made for each other. Whoops. This is just a question of eyeballing it to get it in the right place and to make sure it's straight and you want it up against the back here. Okay. So you will find that you'll get a, an edge all the way round there. And then for the pen to go in. And there we go. What do you think of that? Don't you just love this stamp set? Absolutely gorgeous. Um, one other thing I wanted to say is um, my pens that I'm using are quite chunky pens. Um, I have this one and you can see it's quite a lot slimmer and if yours is slim, what I recommend you do is instead of allowing half an inch and half an inch on those two sides, just cut it down to three eighths of an inch both sides. That means you would have to cut the this um, an eighth of an inch. No, you wouldn't, wouldn't make any difference, would it? No, that's all right. You could just cut that, um, score it a quarter of an inch. Uh, one eighth of an inch less than the half an inch. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put the sizes for a slim pen and a chubby pen in the box below so that you'll know um, what you need to do depending on the size of your pen. So there we go. Many thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, project and um, I hope you like this stamp set as much as I do. Um, I'm totally in love with it. Um, if you would like to purchase any of the products that I featured here today, um, there'll be a link to my 24-7 online stamping up shop in the box below. But please bear in mind that the owl and the dies and this um, chicken wire element won't be available till 5th of September. So please just make a note of it um, so that you can come back on the 5th. In the box below, I'll also put all the measurements. As I say, I'll also do it if you're using a, um, a slimmer pen as well. I'll put those in. And the score lines and where you need to cut these, etc, etc. If you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one, which is normally on Wednesdays and Sundays, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you've enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. Always appreciated. Many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio!